We've got some breaking news from the January 6th Select Committee, just out with um, news about requesting information from Congressman Jim Jordan. Joining me now is NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Garrett Hake, NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams, and, again, John Bresnahan. Uh, so, Garrett, what are they asking for from Congressman Jordan? In this case, the committee chair, ben Thompson, Benny Thompson, says that Jordan was in touch, they believe, multiple times with Donald Trump on the 6th itself, and they want to ask him about those discussions, what was discussed, whether it was a text or phone call, what have you, during the hours that the violence was going on, and what was discussed about the possibility of continuing the challenge to the election results after the Capitol was cleared. The committee chairman's letter to Jordan also points out that Jordan has said publicly when he's been asked about January 6th since that he's got nothing to hide, almost daring him to come and be willing to answer questions. Brez, what do you make of this news? Well, uh, you know, they, they crossed the threshold when they first asked Scott Perry for information. They're clearly uh, setting up for Kevin McCarthy, that seems to me like the one that they're really interested in, the House Minority Leader, possibly the next Speaker of the House, if the Republicans win the majority. I think, you know, I, I, I'm i just not sure where this goes. I mean, if Jordan talked to Trump, you know, what, and, and he says, uh, you know, he, he acknowledges that publicly, but then he says he doesn't want to talk to the committee, are they going to subpoena him? I just don't know. That's a, that's a they, I mean, this is the this is the big question they face. Can they subpoena Jordan or Perry or McCarthy? Are they willing to go that far? And then would a court allow them to enforce it? So it's you know they're setting they're clearly setting up for that kind of clash ahead. Well, let me ask about that because Garrett Liz Cheney has been pretty, I mean not direct but almost direct about where she thinks this is going. She's spoken in terms that make you think maybe there's a, a, a something criminal with the president. I mean, what is your sense on their willingness to subpoena a sitting member of Congress, given, given frankly, the gravity of what they are investigating? Well, look, Liz Cheney's been quoting from U.S. code. I mean, she clearly thinks that there were crimes committed covets this fight. She sees it as absolutely essential to have in this moment for the future of her party. The possibility that the former president might have committed a crime or that any of these other members have committed a crime, that seems a, a little bit more remote because, remember, most of them were like in the building, in the chamber when this was all going on on January 6th. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of lined up with Brez here. We don't know how deep this rabbit hole goes. Whether you have a subpoena for a sitting member, you fight that all the way through the courts. Does the committee use the tools that are available to the House majority, like trying to strip someone of committee assignments? Jim Jordan's the ranking member of the, of, of the Judiciary Committee, I mean, or excuse me, of the Oversight Committee. He's someone who could be a committee chairman in yeah. the next Congress, let alone if you go down this route with Kevin McCarthy here. So we are, we are potentially going deep into uncharted territory here as the timeline gets condensed for this committee coming back in a midterm election year. Pete, I know your beat's not politics or Capitol Hill, but you do cover the DOJ. What would Merrick Garland be likely to have a stomach for? Would he be um, willing to, to go down contempt charges if, if, say, Jim Jordan was subpoenaed and he refused to testify? Well, he'd have to consider it. The law requires the Justice Department to evaluate whether to submit it to a grand jury. Um, you know, I, I think we would be in a, a territory that I'm not familiar with any cases like that. And, and of course, it raises a question about whether uh, it would violate the Constitution's speech or debate clause that say members of Congress can't be held to account, I think is the phrase the Constitution used, prosecuted for anything involving their official business. And the courts have been pretty uh, generous about what official business is. So uh, it may it may not be possible to do a criminal case. I don't know.